Hi, everybody. This is Deborah Peters for The Deborah Peters Show, and it's episode nine. Today, I want to talk about the harvest. It's such a um, really important time of year. We're rolling into Labor Day. Sad to say that summer is ending. Don't you find that um, summer is a very special time of year? Even if you live in a warm climate like I do, and it's pretty warm all the year long, summertime is special. There is something, hey Christopher, there's something about summer that's unique. It just has a different energy and a different vibe. And um, hey Ronald, I like summer because there's some kind of um, energy around it that is it's sort of a, it's ease, you know, it's an energy of ease. It's going to the lake, it's longer days, the sun is out longer and we just, we wanna be outside, we wanna be with our friends, grilling in the backyard. Um, hey, happy, yeah, happy Friday and happy long weekend. It's um, Labor Day, we're rolling into the harvest. I remember growing up in Canada and this was always the beginning of a lot of hard work where you're outside, you know, lifting bales and harvesting wheat and taking care of animals. And it was just a really busy, busy time. So I have a different lifestyle now and it's not quite like that on a physical level, but there's a lot to be said about rolling into the last part of the year. The summer's over and it's pretty much in Q4, you know, September, October, November, December. It's the last part of the year. And this is your opportunity to really hit it big to really hit it out of the park. Take the weekend, recharge your battery, hang out with your friends. Because in the US with Thanksgiving, you basically have from after Labor Day till Thanksgiving to really hit your numbers. So this is the time of the harvest. And one of the things I've been looking at is women in the business world and women in their um, corporate careers and, and how that looks Hey, Tony, um, and, and being a part of a male-oriented business environment globally. I've been speaking on stages in 16 countries over the last 20 years, and a lot of my clients have been men. They own the businesses. They are, hey, Rodolfo, um, since it's all guys on here, you can relate to what I'm saying. Um, it's, it's usually men on board seats. It's usually men that are directors of companies. It's usually men that are decision makers. And it's unfortunate. It's 2018 and we're still in that sort of industrial age thinking. But um, women are coming to the forefront. And one of the things I want to encourage is for women not to begin to act or think like a man in order to make it in the level of success you want to make it own your difference, own your capacity for bringing something new to the table, for having a different perspective, for seeing things in a different way. There's been a lot of books that have been written on how women and men think differently. I don't necessarily subscribe to them all and I'm not gonna name which ones they are, but I just know from doing coaching and training and speaking in a really wide variety of industries and markets across the planet that um, there really aren't any gender lines. You know, we all have belief systems, we all have paradigms, we all have um, limitations that we deal with every day. We can all have our feelings hurt, we can all um, feel like we're on top of the world that we're you know, killing it, that we're achieving what we want to achieve. That's not a gender thing. Thank you, Rodolfo, I appreciate, I really do. So thanks for sharing and getting on here. Um, so it's not really about gender, is it? It's about our programming and our patterning. And so when I talk about programming and patterning, we receive that when we're young and our environment brings us into the fold of a certain way of viewing life, a certain way of viewing the world, and uh, hey, Jimmy, and a certain way of, um, of, a, of viewing ourselves in the world. And what if you were to change that point of view? 
you know, I asked myself this question, hey, Ted, um, you know, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Whenever I feel like I'm really stuck on seeing things a certain way, I, I ask myself this question or I'll say this statement to myself, you know, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And if you find yourself um, kind of stuck in life in terms of uh, creating the results that you want to create, it's usually because you have um, like a fixed point of view and you're not allowing anything inside of that point of view other than holding really tight to that point of view. When I used to do couples coaching, one of the things we would say was, do you want to be right or do you want to be loved? And it's kind of a weird question, but basically if I unpack that, um, hey Elizabeth, what it means is, you know, do you want to hold true to your point of view and defend your limitations? Or do you want to open your heart and receive the love and let go of the judgment? And, and that can be very difficult to do. So interesting point of view, I have that point of view, is a way of dismantling your points of view that are blocking you from being in a ease and flow existence in your lifetime. Because life was really meant to be ease. And we've been taught differently. If you remember in one of my last shows, I said, we are taught to forget our greatness. And so, hey Lucho, um, when we have these points of view that keep us stuck, then we are looking at our lives through those points of view. And the points of view actually become a lens or a filter. And so then we can only see what's in the point of view. We can't actually see the potential and the possibility. And this is the issue. So as we roll into this harvest season, how are you gonna actually pull together everything that you've planted? Like all those seeds you've planted, and all those cultivations you've been doing all year long on all the deals that you have on the table, how are you actually going to close those and bring those to fruition? It's going to be through the flexibility and the use of, of your own mind and, and the energy and how you wield your energy and the way you project that energy. So one of the points I wanted to make tonight is on this idea around uh, the industrial age thinking that we are on our way out of. And it's causing a lot of discomfort for a lot of people that are used to the hierarchy model. So in the industrial age model, we have this idea that life is a hierarchy. And in the hierarchy, it's like a scramble to the top. It's a fight to the finish line. It's a limited pie that we have to work for, um, bend over backwards for, sacrifice for, struggle for in order to get there. And what that does is it actually puts us into this hamster wheel of trying to outdo other people. And then we start looking outside of ourselves and we think that they're better than us so they have more going for themselves than we do and we start to put ourselves underneath other people Whew, man that will keep you so disenfranchised that will keep you so unfulfilled and it'll keep you just kind of like having your goal be out of your reach where you're unable to actually grasp it and hold on to it and bring it in so in the industrial age thinking, we've got this, this hierarchical concept. And the reason I think that a lot of women haven't gone for it, so to speak, haven't actually created and carved out the empires that mostly the male gender have done in historical points is because the, the hierarchical system doesn't really fit the female psyche or the female wiring because we're, we're kind of set up to be more collaborative. It's how we bring families together, right? In the old industrial age model, the man went out and brought in the beans and the woman stayed home and took care of the home and the children. So the woman sort of always had her arm around the family dynamic and bringing and pulling everything together. 
Well, that's a dying entity. That's a paradigm that has expired. And so even families now are being forced to reinvent the actual process or the actual framework for how they're going to have the fi family dynamic work for everyone, particularly when you have two working parents and then you have children and you've got childcare and you've got all sorts of things going on. But just in terms of, of the business perspective, so we have this uh, um, hierarchical model. It's based in industrial age thinking, which was very much about keeping the caste system in place. You had the leadership, the management, and then the workers. And the workers were never taught the skills of the manager. And the manager was rarely introduced to the secrets of the leadership, right? You look back at Napoleon Hill's work, you look back at um, Andrew Carnegie and Chase and Rockefeller, it was very much a hierarchical model. And the secrets were kept from the little people or the worker bees. Um, the minions, as it were. So that's what's really shifting. And I think that that's where our new economy is going to come from, is the dissolution, the dissolving of that hierarchical system, where the caste systems actually disappear and dissolve and go away. And what we do instead is we create these um, more balanced processes and systems and business models where it's more of an even playing field. Uh, this week I had an opportunity to hit up an LA Chamber uh, meeting where there's a presentation on millennials. Millennials as our, our workers, our partners, millennials as our customers. And one of the main traits, by the way, I love millennials and I think millennials kind of get a bad rap, but that's for another show. So one of the topics of conversation within that presentation, um, hey, Randall and Tony, thank you for joining me, is that um, millennials come from this place of, it, it has to be a collaborative mindset. Well, when you're collaborating, it's like everybody's on that even playing field. It's not where you get to be above someone and keep someone in their place. And as this whole model shifts and changes, then what's going to happen is you're going to see more women come to the forefront because women have a tendency and I'm generalizing. I know it's not every, not, this is not for everybody because there are some women that take on sort of that um, male um, yang, not male gender, but male yang energy of um, hierarchical thinking of industrial age thinking. And they, they work the role very well and it works out great for them but it creates an imbalance in their lives because then suddenly they're having to sacrifice the family time, the home time, because you can't be in two places at once, at least not yet. Um, quantum physics is changing that. So yeah, what's happening is we've got this breakdown in this industrial age thinking, and we have literally an entirely new generations. Hey, Karen, uh, we have entirely new generations coming onto the marketplace and not to sound disrespectful, but the old generation is dying, you know? Yeah, uh, living longer and yet still dying, you know? Um, those old guard mentality whole placeholder people are getting old and checking out off the planet. And then we have all these millennials that are rolling up into the workforce, into the entrepreneur space, into the business owner space. So whether we like it or not, we're seeing this shift take place and the whole hierarchical uh, pyramid type of structure to a company, to a business, my goodness, even to a government. You know, I could make some predictions about what's gonna happen um, politically within the next like four to five years, but um, that's a show for another time too. So this is, uh, hey Lou, so these are the changes that are taking place. I think, you know, it'd, it'd be interesting, you know, speculatively to wonder what, how that's going to impact our financial structure, our financial market structure. Um, you know, we're already seeing the influx of, of cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and, and blockchain, what have you. You know, Malta, um, the Republic of Malta, 
just made an announcement a few months ago that they had set up their the, the very first um, um, cryptocurrency physical bank on the planet. And uh, so, we, you know, when that starts happening and it's completely off the grid of the of the regular banking system, change is afoot. So change is afoot in, in thinking. It's, it's afoot in, in business structure. The pyramid structure is dying because the, the younger millennial generations will not tolerate it. They will not tolerate this idea of sacrifice self now for attainment later. They really don't care about retirement because it's very much in the now. Present time has become a massive influence on how we actually achieve, hey Lynn, um, how we actually achieve our goals and meet our objectives within our company growth. And then it's all about collaboration. So, you know, when you're sitting, when the CEO is sitting next to the programmer and they're collaborating on how to create the specific desired outcomes that need to happen to meet the bottom line, that's a game changer. So it's, you know, very, very soon you're going to see that it's not about gender and um, and it's not about who's got the corner office with the fancy parking spot because that's that's gone too. You know, people are working from home. Laptop lifestyle, baby. It's all about that. You know, everybody wants their freedom now. We all want to be able to move about the planet at our leisure. We don't want to have to spend, you know, 50 weeks planning that two-week vacation. And that's part of the old... Um, yang male oriented hierarchical pyramid global structure too so it's all crumbling it's all changing it's a beautiful situation in my opinion i think it's filled with blessings hey timothy i think that uh in my observation of working with the companies that i am in different parts of the world that it's really shaking people at their tree and uh, tree roots and it's causing some massive uh, fear issues so just really as you're going into this harvest stay focused um, keep your eye on the desired outcomes you want to create ignore all the other stuff that's blowing up around you because just like the professional race car driver if you focus on trying to miss the other cars you will hit the other cars if you focus on trying to miss the guardrail, you will run into the guardrail. You have to keep your eye on where you want to put the car in a race, even if there's no space for that car, because when you put your focus on where you want to put that car, the, a space will be made. And that's exactly the same way you go about rolling in the harvest and bringing in the harvest as you roll into this next year or this last quarter of this year. So I want to wish you guys all a really fantastic Labor Day weekend. I know that I'm going to be getting a little bit of pool time. I'm going to be relaxing, got a little staycation happening, and uh, just going to recharge my battery because, you know, once we get past this next week, hitting the ground running, a lot of international travel. I'll be in Monaco at um, month end for those of you that, are interested in connecting into the luxury markets you can you can uh, hit me up I've got a few events speaking events there and then I'll be uh, I'll be in London putting together a deal um, and then back here stateside in September and then uh, er, heading out to um, Fort Lauderdale and, and seeing some clients there in late October early November and then mid November is Amsterdam so lots of opportunities to connect, to collaborate, and uh, very much looking forward to catching up with you. Thanks for all the shares and the likes and the comments. If there's a particular topic you would like me to cover, please definitely um, send me a message, PM me. You can put it in the message line here. And our next business success blueprint, um, our business accelerator bootcamp is coming up on September 20th and 21st in Los Angeles. It's limited to 20 business leaders that are committed to their growth. And uh, shoot me a PM, I'll send you over our business accelerator assessment. You can take a look at the curriculum, kind of take a little self-assessment on your business structure, and we can work with you and help you up level. So love you guys. Thank you so much. Have a blessed weekend. And yeah, definitely 
focus on that harvest. All right, guys, take care. Bye.